I look upon uh, this whole country, I've got not hundreds, but thousands, maybe tens of thousands of grandchildren and great-grandchildren, people who got the idea, hey, you can say something with a song instead of a speech. And uh, if it's a good song, other people will pick it up and sing it. Uh, I don't know where I got that idea. I guess I got it from Woody. Um, you, you mentioned uh, singing at Obama's inauguration a year ago. H how did that come about? Mainly an extraordinary, wonderful, honest man named Bruce Springsteen. Bruce Springsteen invited you down there to be part of that? He arranged the whole thing, and it was so well organized, it was unbelievable. Uh, a large cast of several hundreds. Uh, there were teenagers from Washington who memorized the choruses and joined in on them. And uh, all I had to do was give the lines to the audience. I when shouted, I was walking that ribbon of highway. audience sang the whole song, the biggest audience I ever had in my life, like a million people stretching out from Lincoln Memorial all the way to the Washington Monument. Woody Guthrie, he uh, had indomitable faith in America, and he was kept making up songs and now, of course, they're famous. I've read that uh, when you were out with him in Texas, his Woody's mother-in-law said, tried to get you to, to prevail upon Woody to, to treat his wife better. Uh, Woody was not a good husband nor a good father. He was always leaving home and uh, not, not paying the rent, uh, and I remember his wife's mother shaking me by the shoulder and said, you've got to make that man treat my daughter right. But I didn't know what to do. <laughs> Finally, Woody left her just one too many times, and she divorced him, and she has never said a bad word about Woody. She simply said, we were too young. I was 16, mm -hmm. he was a few years older. So let's let's turn the the way back machine back to 1940, when you you met Woody Guthrie. Woody Guthrie hitchhiked to New York, and with his thumb stuck up, uh, stuck out into the February wind, he was going across Pennsylvania. And when he went in to a, get a cup of coffee, which was a nickel then, he heard Kate Smith singing "God Bless America" on the jukebox. which had just been, come out in 38. That's right, it was a hit song. And he made up some verses. As I was walking that ribbon of highway, I saw above me that endless skyway. I saw below me that golden valley. God blessed America for me. And we never heard him sing it. He wrote about 10 or 11 verses and over the years, he changed it to the line we know now. And nine years later, he recorded it for a tiny little company. Uh, I think they made, made 1,000 copies. This is in, four, in the mid uh, after the war. That was in 1949. Uh -huh. Well, some teachers in New York schools found the kids liked it. And the kids were singing it, and a man from the big publishing company, Silver Burdett, who published songbooks for millions of schools, uh, put the song in their book. This song was never sold in a, uh, in a single music store. It was never played on a single radio station. But 20 years later, everybody in America knew the song because the kids liked it and took it home. We didn't indoctrinate a generation of children. 